right, so one of the pieces is in. It's just being held there with a couple of these magnetic squares to uh, just kind of get it set up uh, exactly where I want it um, before I start tacking it in. And uh, as you can see, it's uh, once it's all said and done, it's not going to lose any of its shape or anything. Um, the goal is to at least get these good enough so that, uh, you know, riding-wise, it shouldn't affect anything. Um, probably, though, um, if the light hits it a certain way, you might be able to see these patches a little bit. Um, but the goal is to try and make it so that, you know, it looks like it never even happened. So I'll weld these on the top and on the inside. Um, on the inside, I'm not actually going to go through all this to try and hide um, the welds. I'll just leave them be because you won't see any of that once this is all closed up and everything. Alright, so we got a couple of tacks in here. Um, I like to just start off by just doing doing the minimum, um, just kind of in areas that are either low or high. And I kind of, uh, as you saw, I just take a flathead screwdriver and I just kind of use it to either pry this up or pry, pry it down a little bit, um, just to try and get everything to line up nice and even. And uh, so far it's looking pretty good. So now, uh, just uh, got to weld a bead right straight in, fill it in and then we'll get to grinding. Alright, so we're all welded up inside and out on both tanks. Uh, so now the grinding phase can begin. Um, I went kind of uh, like, I didn't do a back and forth uh, weld like I typically do. This is just a straight pull um, all the way around. So it's not really too much material. If I can get the camera right, if you can look. It's not really too much material um, to grind away, but uh, it's definitely some grinding to do. So here you can see one of the patches is in. Um, I wanted to get a video of this so you could just kind of see the side-by-side -side comparison. So this is one that the weld still needs to be ground down on. and It's kind of weird looking in the camera uh, just because of the way the light's bouncing off of it. But for the most part, if you look at it, um, it's got a nice glassy look to it. You can just barely see when the light catches it right where the weld is. Um, just kind of the coloration in the metal, but there's absolutely no... Uh, ridge there or anything so probably hit this with a little bit of filler and uh, maybe sand over it once or twice and uh, at that point you won't even be able to tell that this ever had a patch in it um, so one down and one two three more to go all right so we officially have all four patches in uh, everything came out really good a um, little bit of uh, filling to do um, which I'm not even sure I really will worry about that too much. Um, but I think by the time I hit these with some primer filler and some paint, uh, everything here should be looking good. So now moving on to how to construct these tanks as complete wheels. So this is the frame that, if you'll remember, was on the underside of this tank when it was all one piece. What I'm going to do 
is take these casters, and I'll probably weld them somewhere in here. I haven't quite measured out where these will go yet, um, but there's one for each corner. Now, the tank's been cut in half, so this is gonna have to be shortened, and what I'll do is I'll take out the amount of material I need, bring these two ends together, and that way I can sit one tank on the casters and then rotate the drum. Um, that's all gonna be so that I can better uh, basically calculate how true or not true these wheels are gonna be. If I took right now and just mounted this tire, tank, whatever, onto that wheel center and then bolted it to the tractor, um, it, chances are it's not gonna run true. Um, it's gonna have a lot of wobble in it. So the key here is to get one of these tanks on this sort of homemade lathe contraption, be able to spin it and see where the true center is for mounting the hub centers. All right, so our homemade lathe slash tank rolling machine is built. Well, it's for the most part built. Um, I took out the better part, uh, every bit of at least five feet of uh, angle iron between these two. Um, from edge to edge, it's exactly 40 inches. Um, so this will work for both the larger tanks and the smaller tanks. So when it comes time to do the smaller tanks or the front wheels, um, these casters will have to be moved in some. Um, these right now are about a good three feet apart. Um, so for the smaller tank, they're going to have to be moved in some. And then instead of being on this outer edge here, I'll have to move them more to the inside. Um, and then this same carriage, carrier, whatever you want to call this thing, uh, should work for the fronts. So luckily our tank did not take any damage. Um, the fork hit roughly somewhere in here. Um, if there is a dent, I can't see it. And the good news is it's on, at least on the end uh, where all this is gonna be getting cut off. So the actual tank that we're after didn't get damaged. Why my fork popped off, I have no idea. Um, that may be because I'm trying to use a C-clamp to hold it on there. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and get everything set up again, use another C-clamp and see if we can't have a little better luck with uh, round two. All right, so I'm gonna have to come up with a different theory. The uh, piece of a forklift C-clamped onto the tractor bucket uh, is not working out. It didn't fall off again, um, but it almost did. Um, so that's not gonna work. The tractor isn't uh, taking too kindly to that. Um, also, the fork isn't really long enough to get to the center part of this drum um, so that it'll flip this way. It's kind of wanting to go this way and the fork once again acted like it, it almost slipped off the uh, the bucket so I'm not gonna try that again. Um, not exactly sure how I'm gonna pull this off but uh, give me a little bit of time I'll think of something.
Well, that was quite the tight fit. Uh, the old Corvair here had to take a spin outside, but other than that, we've got it in here. Um, surprisingly, with this tank sitting on the frame again, um, that actually slides around fairly well on the uh, concrete floor. Not great, but um, I can kind of kick that around to where I want it. So, as you saw, I had it slid way over here somewhere, and I was able to just pull it over there, uh, no problem. Um, this roller system's working pretty well. Um, it's not perfect, um, but I am able to move this uh, tank pretty much, I'll show you, um, one-handed, pretty much, pretty much no issue whatsoever. It rolls around pretty much effortlessly. Um, it's not spinning 100% still. Um, in other words, like if I spin this around, you can kind of see it's kind of shaking and jumping around a little bit. And um, that's, not, that's not perfect, but it's a heck of a lot better um, than I actually kind of thought it would be. Um, and nonetheless, it's still a huge step in the right direction. Um, so as far as cutting off this extra bit, um, it's going to be plenty good enough for that. Um, if I just go slow with my uh, plasma cutter while rolling this around, um, I don't see any reason why. Um, I know it's shaking a little bit, um, but it should work fine. Um, the main thing is going to be back here. I'm going to have to build up off of this frame rail sticking out, which thank God I didn't cut that extra bit off. Um, and I'm probably, once I find center here, wherever that may be, um, which I think I actually did find on the inside, but nonetheless, um, I'm going to have to build something, probably like a bearing or a shaft or something that I'll kind of weld on here temporarily to, one, hold the weight, and also to stop this tank when it's spinning on these wheels. Um, I can already tell you, it started to walk this way some. Um, when I first got it on here, it was not quite this far back. Um, the more I roll this tank around, um, the more it is just ever so gradually walking this way. Um, so there's going to have to be something on this side, basically, that stops this tank from going any further this way or that way. Um, that's going to be the next big challenge. And ultimately... Um, it may, it may work better if I have something holding it here right dead in the center, like a bearing or something, um, as far as centering this tank. But all in all, this is really a big step in the right direction. I'm really happy with this um, for right now. Um, as it stands, I have a plasma cutter on order. It's not here. So it's nice to at least have this done before that showed up. So I'm really happy with all this. So I think at this point, I'm going to start packing up, and that's enough for one day here. So, until I've got more, I'll see you later.